In this chapter, we will look at some of the basic concepts of the AS400. Let us begin by looking at some of the features of the AS400 that have contributed to making it one of the most popular platforms for business computing. They are Technology Independent Interface a high level of integration, object orientation, an integrated relational database management system, single level storage. Let us look at each of these features in detail. Technology Independent Interface The AS400 architecture has been designed to keep the applications independent of the underlying hardware. This is achieved through an interface known as the Technology Machine Interface or MI. The hardware along with all the operating system components that are dependent on the hardware lie below the MI. All applications and parts of the operating system that are independent of the hardware lie above the MI. The parts of the operating system lying below the machine interface are referred to as licensed internal code. The part above the MI is called the OS 400. The significance of this technology independence is that when a user upgrades to 64-bit technology both the operating system as well as all applications become 64-bit software. The applications do not have to be rewritten to take care of the 64-bit technology. A high level of integration Perhaps the most important feature of the AS400 is that it is a totally integrated system. On most computer systems the various components such as the database, security, communications are different components that are developed separately and have to be configured to work together. The AS400 on the other hand has a totally integrated system which includes all the various components such as the database, security, communications etc. The advantage of this is that all the components have been optimized to work together. The customer does not have to be concerned with the intricacies involved in making them work together. Object Orientation The AS400 has an object based architecture. Almost every named entity on the AS400 is an object. You have libraries, files, programs, commands, user profiles, job descriptions, subsystems, job queues, message queues and output queues. All objects are encapsulated that is they are protected by an interface that identifies the objects and also specifies the operations that can be performed on the object. Both the OS 400 as well as applications relate to the object through this interface. An integrated relational database management system. DB2 400, the relational database for the AS 400 is totally integrated with the AS400 operating system. DB2400 lies partly in the OS400 and partly below the machine interface that is in the licensed internal code. This is unlike other conventional database products that sit as separate components on top of an operating system. Because of this integration the DB2400 database achieves a much higher level of efficiency than one built on top of an operating system. DB2400 is also very tightly integrated with the other system components with which it communicates. 
single level storage. All the storage on the AS400 is treated as one large address space. On CISC machines, we have 48 bit addresses and an address space of 256 terabytes. On RISC machines, we have 64 bit addresses and an address space of 18,44,670 terabytes. The single level storage is not visible above the machine interface. Both applications as well as OS 400 reference the objects by name only. Let us take a closer look at objects. As we mentioned earlier, the AS400 has an object based architecture. All objects on the AS400 are encapsulated within an interface that identifies the object as well as the operations that can be performed on the object. The object type identifies the purpose of the object and how it can be used on the system. The AS400 supports more than 80 object types. Some of the more familiar object types are libraries, files, programs, commands and user profiles. There are also other object types which may not be so familiar such as job descriptions, subsystems, job queues, message queues and output queues. The object type is assigned automatically by the system when you create the object. The object type is determined by the command that was used to create the object. For example, the command create user profile will create an object whose type is star user profile. Some operations can be performed on only a particular type of object. For example, the display library command can be used only with libraries. There are also some operations that can be performed on any type of object. For example, the display object description command can be used on any type of object. Whenever an object is created, it is placed in a library. Libraries provide a very efficient method to organize objects into groups. A library on the AS400 is an object which is of the type star lib. It is used to locate other objects on the system and can be compared to the directories found on PCs and the Unix operating system. The AS400 library differs from these directories in that it has a single level hierarchy as compared to the multi-level hierarchy followed by the PC and UNIX systems. What this means is that a library on the AS400 cannot contain another library but can only contain other objects. However, there is an exception. The QSYS library is a special library that can reference other libraries. Some AS400 objects such as user profiles can only be located in the QSYS library. An object is uniquely identified by a combination of object name, library name and object type. Hence, two objects in the same library can have the same name provided they are not of the same type. To access an object, we have to specify both the object name as well as the library in which the object exists. This is called a qualified name for an object. We can also supply only the object name and tell the system to search a set of libraries to locate the object. This is achieved through the use of library lists. A library list is an AS400 object 
that defines a path of libraries. Each job has its own library list. Whenever a user needs to access some object and does not specify the library in which to locate it, the system will search for the object in the library specified on the library list. It starts with the first library on the list and stops when it encounters an object of the specified name. Any objects with the same name that are located in libraries further down, the library list will be ignored. To access these objects, you will have to use a qualified name. Hence, you should always take care to ensure that the libraries on the library list are in the proper order. The library list consists of four parts. The first part consists of the system libraries that contain up to 15 libraries that are needed by the OS 400. The system value QSYSLIBL defines the libraries that are to be placed in this part of the list. The second part consists of the product libraries and lists the libraries required by various products such as QRPG required by RPG by 400. The third part of the library list is the current library. This identifies the library into which new objects created by the job are to be placed. The current library is always placed after the product libraries. Hence, this is always the first user library that will be searched when an object is requested. The last part of the library list will contain the libraries required by the user. Some IBM supplied libraries will also be included in this part such as QTemp which is the temporary library created for each job when it is started and QGPL, which is a general purpose library. When we do not include a current library on the library list, all newly created objects will be placed in the QGPL library. Let us move on to the integrated file system. Imagine a PC file system, a Unix file system, and the OS 400 library system all combined to form a single structure. That is exactly what the integrated file system on the AS 400 is. It supports an hierarchical structure and provides a common interface to all AS 400 objects, documents and stream files. Stream files can store long strings of data such as the text of a document, images, audio and video. Let us look at the different file systems. The integrated file system has a common root node. The QSYS library that provides access to the original library structure for AS400 objects and QDLS for the shared folders for AS400 office and PC clients are included under the single root node. Six other file systems have been included as part of the integrated file system. QOpenSys is a fully POSIX compliant Unix file system. QLANSRV is a file system for LAN server clients and is available only when LAN Server 400 has been installed on the system. QFile SVR 400 provides connection to remote file systems. QPW XCWN is for Windows clients. QOPT is a file system for supporting optical data servers. And finally, you have a user defined file system. The naming convention used for the integrated file system is based on the PC standard. 
the integrated file system allows any client to look at a file stored in the AS400 as if it were part of its own file system. To a Unix client it will look like a Unix file system while to PC clients it will look like a PC file system. Both clients will be looking at the same data of which there need be only a single copy. With this we have come to the end of this chapter. Summary In this chapter we have looked at some of the important features of the AS400. Technology independent interface A high level of integration Object orientation Integrated database Single level storage we also saw the basic concepts of the AS400 architecture such as objects, libraries and library lists. Finally, we also saw the integrated file system, a unique concept that allows multiple file structures to coexist together.